<laughs> they come down just good. Don't exactly have my right notes. Now. I don't have my notes for it. So. <laughs> just wing it. <laughs> One time I was in DC and uh, I get a call and they're like, uh, "Are you the hell home?" I'm like, "What do you, what do you need?" Well, we got like a, a room of six hundred feet down. Can you sit so right down? Can I get in there? Uh, what, what do you As are you? <laughs> Well, and they kind of give me the, the idea. I'm like, okay. So I go in there and I have to I look at the first slide that's on that projector, and I'm like, I tell them, I said, ah, suppose I'm supposed to talk to you guys. What am I, what am I talking about? Okay. I'm like, okay, we can talk about this. You make it happen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I got one for all of us. Now here, yeah, it's it's uh, easily. 
the best camera system in the who just joined? Morning, Kelsey. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and the wonderful, this wonderful time of the year. We ask you to bless our Jewish friends as they will celebrate the season of Hanukkah starting on Sunday. Protect the nation of Israel and help us to always be their ally. Lord, we celebrate this Christmas season and remember how you sent your son to light of the world. Father, there's a song that reads, With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. Those beautiful words are written in a song. Let there be peace on earth. We remember your love is shared not only during this season, but throughout the entire year. We know there are many that are suffering loss and hardships throughout this past year. May we be those brothers and sisters there to comfort and assist them in their loss. We are thankful that you have provided the means for our county. We ask you for the wisdom going forward that we always make decisions that are in accordance with your will. As we guide the county, we pray for our elected officials and department heads that they remain diligent and watchful as they guide their respective offices. Father, as we draw near to the end of another year, let us reflect on our own faults and make every effort to correct them. May we praise you for our strengths and our victories. And may we, may we be humble in our success. We ask you for your guidance throughout the meeting and for every day. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll convene the commissioner's public meeting at this time, and we have a few items. Director? Commissioners, uh, seeking your approval to remove action item 9.1, which is the adoption of the 2023 budget. Um, we're going to move it to the, the 29th of December, and that's just due to some legal ad advertising requirements that we didn't make it in time with the change for canceling next week's meeting. Okay. It was originally scheduled for the 22nd. Correct. And we're not having a meeting next week due to the holiday. Right. Okay, so it'll be on for the 29th. Correct. Okay. Now, motion. I'll move to approve the change to the agenda. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, so carried. Okay. Okay, uh, we're up to uh, approve the minutes. Ask for approval of the minutes of the previous okay. meeting. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, aye so carried. Public comment on agenda items only at this time. None online. Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, police service awards, we did not have our uh, participant in the audience today, possibly due to the weather. So we'll also postpone that to the 29th. Okay. So we're at bid openings. Krista. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, two bids, bread products and food products, one bidder for bread products, and it's a multi-line bid. Uh, Bimbo Bakeries was the only bidder. Food products, we had two bidders, Feasers and Cisco, and again, they're multi-line bids used as needed. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, reports, Caitlin. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Presented for your ratification, our invoices due through December 21st to be paid on December 15th in the amount of $1,538,219. The breakdown is as follows, with the general fund funding 54.34% at $835,902.47. 0.73% is being funded by grants and other sources at $11,192.70. And 44.93% is being funded by RMS at $691,123.83. Okay. Can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. Next, I have presented for your ratification our poll workers' pay due December 8th, 2022, to be paid on December 9th in the amount of $90,186.91. And this is being funded 100% through the general fund. Taking a motion. I move to approve. I'll second. I do have a question. We, we are using Act 88 monies now. I think we're getting reimbursed in the general fund from Act so this, this will change. I'm not sure if it changes on this thing. I'm not sure how force has right. that set up, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that all poll uh, workers, uh, anything related to the uh, elections will be Correct. subsidized by that act. Yeah. So. Okay. The funds from Act 88 would go into the general fund and then the payment would come out of it, right? right. Yeah, so it's still, it's coming, you're correct, Kalen, in the sense that it's coming out. And again, we want to thank all our poll workers for their dedication yeah. and service to the county. I was yes, reading an article the other day on uh, poll workers across the nation and how difficult it was for them, you know, especially when they enacted certain other uh, regulatory uh, commitments to, to election. Uh, and it is difficult. These people are working a lot of hours. They don't just work on election day and primary day. They're, they're working uh, diligently for a number of days throughout the year. So plus the, tra agree with plus the training and the training. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I guess the point being that if you're unhappy with an election, don't be unhappy with the poll workers. They are making it happen, but they're not necessarily the elected people who make the decision. No. As to the conduct, the volunteers, right, making the process work. Ex excellent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, one favor, sign. Aye. 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 So carried. And finally, I have presented for your ratification are the polling locations pay, which is due December 9th, to be paid December 9th, 2022, in the amount of forty thousand five hundred dollars. And that is also being funded 100% through the general fund. And will this be the same as well through the act? Yeah. You should check that with. I will. Yeah. I'm going to go back and um, do the research on that. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So Just a note here we increased the amount. Uh, we, we got assistance from the state, and we felt it was fair to the organizations that sponsor locations for the polls to increase the amount so thank you yeah happy birthday thank you oh happy birthday thanks happy happy birthday. Birthday. okay moving on to personnel actions justin good morning just good morning commissioners um i have the following personnel actions um for your approval there are conditional offers of employment subject to the successful completion of a background check and all other employment conditions. Um, for the prison, Caitlin McGraw and LPN full-time replacement, $30 per hour, and we're anticipating her to start on January 2nd. Um, also for the prison, Lane Gibson, a CO relief position. This is a temporary reassignment. Um, 
at $20 per hour and uh, we are transferring him uh, on December the 13th. Um, also for the prison, another re temporary reassignment from PRC, Connor Morse, um, $20 per hour. Anticipated transfer date is December 13th. Uh, also for the prison, a temporary uh, reassignment from PRC to the prison, $20 per hour. Uh, same transfer date, December 13th. Uh, Howard Williams, another reassignment from PRC to the prison. Uh, $20 per hour and we're anticipating him to start on December 13th. Um, also reassignment from PRC, um, Doug Ellsworth. Um, this is a corrections officer position um, and his pay rate would be $22.98 per hour. Also anticipated to start and tra or transfer on December 13th. And then Jesse Wagner, uh, also a temporary reassignment from PRC to the prison. Um, 2368 per hour anticipated transfer date December 13th. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll vote to approve. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? No, we thank the PRC workers for, um, for, for doing this. It's going to help out in terms of our prison staff. So. Okay, all there, Aye. 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 So, Terry, we'll recess the commissioner's public meeting for the salary board this time. We'll convene the salary board. Jess? All right, so um, I have quite the list here for today um, for the salary board. Um, the first is for the domestic relations office, re reclassifying the data fiscal supervisor position from a pay grade eight to a pay grade nine, effective December 25th. Um, and this would impact uh, Christine Zimmerman, uh, who currently sits in this position. In the treasurer's office, we're reclassifying the clerk three position um, uh, to a uh, clerk four position, pay grade five, effective December 25th, and this will impact Catherine Zay and Norma Penninger. In the planning department, uh, the following reclassifications. The assistant, um, how do cartographer. You say? Cartographer, oh, thank you. Um, updated title to lands records GIS technician, uh, reclassifying from a pay grade seven to a pay grade eight, all of these are effective December 25th, um, unless noted otherwise. Um, so this will directly impact Stacey Lewis, um, transferring her to a pay grade eight. Um, the clerk four position, uh, transferring from a pay grade five to a pay grade six, and this will impact Sherry Hook. We'll most likely need to have a title change with that as yeah. well, um, so we'll work on that. Um, the community development lead planner position, we're updating the title to community planning development supervisor and transitioning that from a pay grade 11 to a pay grade 12. Um, this will impact uh, Jennifer Picano, Picano um, directly um, impact her position. Uh, we're uh, transitioning the deputy director position from a pay grade 12 to a pay grade 13 um, and this will impact John Lavalier. Um, the development services supervisor position, transitioning that from a pay grade 10 to a pay grade 11, um, and this will impact Mark Haas. Uh, transitioning the financial administrative supervisor position from a pay grade 9 to a pay grade 10, um, and this will impact Heather Lehman. Transitioning the GIS supervisor position from a pay grade 11 to a pay grade 12, um, and this will impact Amy Fry. Transitioning the lands records cartographer <laughs> Uh, to from uh, just changing the title to a land records information analyst and changing this from a pay grade eight to a pay grade nine. And this will impact Richard Murphy. And then uh, changing the land records data coordinator position from a pay grade six to a pay grade seven. And this will impact Dana Strunk. Transitioning the subdivision and land development administration position from a pay grade eight to a pay grade nine, and this is Chris Hodges position. Um, transitioning the transportation supervisor position from a pay grade 11 to a pay grade 12, um, and this is Scott Williams position. Transitioning the zoning administrator position from a pay grade eight to a pay grade nine, and this is David Hubbard's position. And then lastly for planning, transitioning the zoning officer position from a pay grade seven to a pay grade eight. Um, and this is Heather George's position. For facilities management, we are reclassifying the custodial worker position from a pay grade two to a pay grade three. Again, these are effective um, December 25th. 
Um, this will uh, directly impact um, Ernie Butler, Diane Day, Gary McCartney, Kaylee Richard, Sergey um, Kuliov, um, Keith Mothersbaugh, and Amber Blair. Uh, they would all transition to a pay grade three. In our IT department, we are reclassifying um, the starting rate for the, um, oh, excuse me, we are reclassifying the information technology administrative specialist position from a pay grade four to a pay grade five, and that is Lori Cressman's position. And then we are um, changing the starting rates for the following positions. Uh, they will all remain in the same pay grades, but the starting rate for those positions within that pay grade will change as follows. Uh, the senior network engineer position will start at 65,000. The senior software analyst will also start at 65,000. The technology specialist um, and the software specialist will start at 45,000. And the technology analyst and software analyst will start at 55,000. For the Department of Public Safety, the 911 Center, we are reclassifying um, the following positions. Again, effective December 25th. The Telecommunicator 2 position will uh, transition from a pay grade 7 to a pay grade 8. And this will directly impact um, Samantha Gordner, Mark Miller, Timothy Bosch. Um, Igasha Brown. Brenton Flieger, Alexander Hafner, Clinton Frackman, Katie DeSanto, Tyler Fetterman, and Ashley Dietrich. And I apologize for any names that I mispronounce or any job titles that I mispronounce. Um, the Telecommunicator 3 position will transition from a pay grade 8 to a pay grade 9. Uh, we are uh, specifically impacting Stephanie Andrus and Jacob Winner in this position. And then we are changing the trainee position uh, from a pay grade 6 to a pay grade 7. And this will impact Skylar Corbin currently in the position. I think cool. it's important to note on the TCs that it's all paid for through 911. Thank you. Um, the prison, we are reclassifying those positions, um, these positions below. The clerk three position um, will transition from a pay grade four to a pay grade five. Uh, we have an updated title listed here as a personnel assistant, but um, I think we're probably still going to work on that, and that may not be the final title. Um, we are also um, adjusting the corrections counselors, um, all of them um, by $1.90 per hour, and we are retro retroing that back to be effective for June 1st. Um, this will directly impact Bradley Bayshore, Carrie Snook, and Joe Worthington. In the controller's office, we are reclassifying the deputy director position from a pay grade eight to a pay grade nine. This is Nikki Gutschall's position. In the tax assessment office, we are um, reclassifying, um, or actually, excuse me, adding a new position um, lead field assessor, which is a pay grade seven, and uh, we will transition Ashley Beatty into that position. In the commissioner's department, we are reclassifying the chief procurement officer position from a pay grade 11 to a pay grade 12, and that is Maya Toon's position. In the budget and finance office, we are reclassifying the general accountant position, um, and that is a, uh, from a pay grade nine to a pay grade 10. That um, will directly impact Carissa Seals in her current position, and that will be effective on uh, this current pay period, December 11th. And then also um, discussing again, I guess we're re uh, reiterating this under salary board, um, the temporary transfers from PRC to the prison due to the staffing crisis at the prison, and those changes are effective December 13th. Again, will impact Lane Gibson, Connor Morse, Marsha Thomas, Howard Williams, Doug Ellsworth, and Jesse Wagner. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Can I have a second? I'll second discussion. So I would put this under the heading of retention and recruitment. Recruitment and retention. You can put it in whichever order you would like, um, but uh, the reality is that over the last more than a year, we've struggled with a lot, a lot of vacancies. And some, after COVID sort of was on, the, or over I should say, the 
struggle with recruitment is still there. And a lot of the people who, whose names were read are people who have done multiple jobs to fill in the absence of other people in the department. When we're running with 50 vacancies, when we're running $3 million under budget, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Director, but I think $3 million under our budgeted amount for wages, it's because we have so many openings and people are doing the work. And quite frankly, it's not fair to burn them out uh, and expend them like they are uh, some commodity. Um, so on the positive side, by changing some of these grades, I believe we're going to be able to continue to attract top quality candidates to the county and be able to provide the support that people need. Our goal is to, in my view, try to keep people for a long time because when they stay a long time, their efficiency increases, their institutional knowledge, not just about what happens in the county, but to be effective in this county as a planner or whatever you do, you need to know what goes on at the state level. You need to know what goes on in a bigger picture. I mean, a, a good example is, is the whole discussions we've had about MATP, the medically assisted treatment, and the fact that our counselors at the prison are on top of what's happening in the court cases across the state, which at some point is probably going to make it a requirement that MATP provided in the prison. That's the kind, we want the kind of skill set in people that you have in an organization that really uh, serves the public in the best way. Uh, in, in, in places like planning, the ability, as Commissioner Masser has said, to have projects on the shelf so that when the state comes down and says, oh, there's a grant available, we're giving out money, but by the way, you have to have your proposal in in two or three weeks. And that's what's happening now, and if, and if I'm incorrect, we have enough people from planning here, they can correct me. But that's what's happening. The state is basically saying, we want this money on the street, because the federal government is saying we want the money on the street fast. So um, I, I think that, I hope the public will understand the spirit in which these were done. And by the way, there's still some other problems in my view that have to be corrected. We have a number of people who work 24 seven, specifically the coroner, some of the folks in the sheriff's department and others. Who are, who are being paid 37 and a half hours a week. And they're literally on call 24 seven. And in my mind, it, it, it is not um, fair or equitable to, to do that to people. And so that is something which I hope that we as a board are gonna revisit soon. We simply, quite frankly, there was a lot of work to analyze these and to get these done. So I just, I don't want people, if they didn't see that there, to think that that was not something of concern. Commissioner, this is a deeper problem than just the past year. This is a problem that's been going on for 34 years. Our county pay skill has not been updated since 1988. In 2014, the pay skill system was taken away, which was fine at the time, but there was no solution put in place. So therefore, the problems continued and they magnified over time. We have we have employees making more than supervisors. So with that said, we, we have made a number of adjustments. And as you can see today, there's a ton of adjustments here. But this isn't just where a department head or somebody brings a, a request to the commissioners or the HR and we rubber stamp it. They may request two or three pay grades higher. And we might look at it and say, well, they do deserve an adjustment. For instance, the courts recently brought their, their magisterial clerks to us. They haven't been adjusted since 2002. So we had to take a look at that. But, and, and what we decided to come up with, it was a savings of $53,000 over what was originally proposed to us. So um, they did need to be adjusted. So there are, there are positions that need to be adjusted to, to be in today's market. We have 50 openings, it's down down to about 30 and we'll continue to tackle this problem. I agree with you about the 80 hours. It's not fair to have people working uh, excessive, excessive hours and not be properly compensated for them. So we'll continue to address that. But uh, we're, we're attacking a massive problem that's been going on for years, decades, decades. And we're able to do it, but the key is to remain within our budget. And that's what we've done. And Jess, I, did you bring the numbers with you today that you shared with us on Monday? Okay. 
they've actually reduced over what your original proposal was, which was just over a million dollars. I think it was, uh, we, we've saved just slightly over $15,000 from your original proposal. Right. Yep. Between the 3.5% mm -hmm. plus the adjustments in the, in the employee salaries. But this, again, this goes to recruiting. And I just heard on the radio uh, two days ago that employers are having a hard time recruiting because of retirements, because of COVID deaths, and because of the workforce. There's not as many people in the workforce because we're not having as many children. So it's a multi, um, a multi, um, Layer. Layer problem, yeah. yes, that, that has created a perfect storm for, for private and um, public government, or government and, and private uh, employers. It's not just here, it, it's across the board nationwide. So as we, as we try to, to attract those employees to do the jobs, we have to adjust the wages. And um, if we don't, then we have openings and uh, we have people that uh, are quitting because they can't, they can't deal with the stress, and I don't blame them. Uh, what the prison guards have gone through over the last year, it, it's been incredible, and I, I commend them for the ones that have stayed. Um, and we have, we have the state system and now the federal system taking our employees because they're, they're paying more. So as long as we can do so within our budget, we'll continue to attack this problem. Commissioner, I have the, the number you were asking about. Yes. So the compensation policy uh, changes or adjustments uh, cost approximately 368610 The reclassification costs uh, approximately 195 uh, The 3.5% increase to all employees uh, approximately 578645 um, There were grants and other funding, 911, that offsets some of that, and that's approximately 65000 um, So the total cost of all of these combined, taking out the other funding, is approximately $1,077,395. Okay. Now we're cognizant of the fact that that repeats every year, right? So we understand that. We also understand that we're not going to be able to run when 10% of the jobs are vacant, which is about what we've been running. And we have about 70% of our workforce that makes 40,000, gross 40,000 or less. Now they get the benefits, which puts them up right. about 60. And, and with the inflation, the way it's going and, and the cost of living uh, across the board, it's just, uh, it's hard. It's hard. So. Yeah. Uh, the key is, as long as we can do this within our budget, we'll continue to attack it. Uh, I echo my, my colleagues' uh, comments, although I'm a little disappointed in, in the timing because we had discussed this prior, but that's okay. C can I explain that to you because something came <coughs> in a development that came that well, we... Well, let me, let me explain why I didn't second the vote. Okay. And it's not, and it's not because I don't believe the people are war aren't warranted. Okay, I believe that our director of human resources has done a tremendous job in, in a relatively short period of time to ask all the department heads, to ask everyone for input, and then do the research that's necessary to bring us up to, to where those rates should be within our budget. Okay, I, I, I agree with that. It's the time. And, um, you know, when when you're doing this, the last pay period of the 2022, right, makes a difference in 2023. And, and, and here's what I mean by that. As you walk around our community and, and you look at the, you know, food banks and you look at people putting five dollars in gasoline and you're looking at the, the it's suffering and it's catching up to the people right um the taxpayers because that's who we represent okay the department heads and the elected officials run their departments and that's what they're supposed to do i'm supposed to i'm supposed to make sure that what we're doing is fair and equitable to the taxpayers of this county. And here, 
and you correct me if I'm wrong, we're, we're giving anywhere from no less than 5%, okay, um, in these corrections, to as high as, I think I saw one at 30%, okay? And that's a lot of money. I'm not saying that they're not worth it. I'm saying that I thought we agreed to do it at the second pay period of January so that it didn't get another increase prior to the beginning of the year. I, I was unaware of that, but... Um, so, Commissioner, if, I, if you could just indulge me for a minute. Sure. What we realized was that we, we know we have 26 pay periods in the year. I understand. This would have been the 27th pay period. We are doing it in the first pay period of 2023. Yeah. It happens that pay period happens to begin on December 25th, a Sunday, and travels through to January 8th, the yeah. Saturday. This is not a tremendous amount of money. No. But okay. that's the only, I, I, I understand that. That's it's the only reason we made the reversal on that, because we can't do 27 pay periods. It totally screws up our entire... And we've been doing it this way for the last two years, so this change in when we started this... 26 pay periods it's been done this way for the last two years so and, that's and, and i think is would have had to read we haven't done a compensation policy right we haven't done reclassifications we right. haven't done over the Understood. past two years either Understood. Okay. Yeah. so just add another three and a half percent and that's what we got okay and i believe that we're as commissioners we can fare with everyone okay So this was, this was brought up at the HR meeting on Monday. Unfortunately, you were in a little bit ten. Um, we tried to reach out to you by phone and you weren't available. It was something that should have I mentioned to you prior to the meeting this morning because that's the first time. Yeah, yeah we, we don't want you to think yeah. we, we did Seen an end run on you. Right. Yeah. It, it was honestly, it was a little bit of a surprise to the two of us and to yeah. our support staff in terms of the director and the director of HR that we were running into an IS nightmare yeah. by trying to create the 27th pay period. The director said but to me... I, yeah, we do apologize. Yeah, the director said to me on the way out last night, he said, um, you know, Tony hasn't unfortunately been here the last couple of days. Are we going to be able to discuss about the pay period before the meeting tomorrow? I said, yeah, we have to mention to you as soon as you get in the office. So. And both of us forgot to mention it to you as soon as you got into the office. <laughs> and I, I am sorry, and don't don't take it as a personal but it came anything. Up, it, came it, was, up, it came up Monday, and I we think... We were too busy Chris talking about the comment? weather, the snow. I have some questions. Okay, yes. Um, Could you please come up so that oh. this we're on live stream? Yep. Um, under information services where it says we're moving to new starting rates for the following positions but they're remaining within the same pay grade are we changing the low end of those grades or are we just saying these jobs get a different starting rate than anyone else in those pay grades this seemed a little confusing to me yes it would be the um it would be the same, it would be the, that would be the new starting rate for those positions. But we, not this pay grade. No, it would be okay. this rate within that grade. There's a couple other positions across the county that we've done that for. Um, equipment operators being one of them where they are in a particular grade and they don't start at the beginning of that grade. So there's a couple other positions that are like that. Isn't that usually made like on an individual basis though as you hire someone because you can hire within that grade? No. no, see that's been one of our problems. We have always been forced to hire at the beginning pay. So we have someone who applies for the job, they've got six years experience, but under our policy, we couldn't take them. We could do that with director, uh, with uh, department heads. We couldn't do it with regular employees. So part of the compensation policy that we passed was to say, okay, we're going to look at your years of experience, we're going to look right. at your education and training. Okay, okay so that's, that, that's a good question. But that is why we are, we are doing that, because we can't attract. Are, are, we, are we going to, are there other departments that are scheduled for 2023 to be reclassified? 
scheduled no um, we we had discussed um, as a as a group um, at my HR meeting that the reclassification request um, would have been managed through this process that I just went through and that any other reclassification request would come for the budget uh, review process next year um, so so no I don't have any plans of any additional reclassifications but I do want to say that another example of what Chris is bringing up is the LPN position so we adjusted the starting rate for that position um, the grade may have been adjusted but it's, it's not necessarily the start of that grade that's the start for that position it's the $30 so right. there's other examples where we do that and it just made sense with my discussions with Jerry that that's how we would handle these positions we did the reclassifications in the court, right? The MDJ. Yeah, yeah, we did that. that earlier. Yeah, we that, did that a couple that, of weeks. Yes, ago. that was done. Okay. Um, it's not on this agenda, so that's actually a good point. Um, it wasn't. Uh, we had a couple questions yet for the uh, court administrator, um, but so that'll be on our next agenda. Okay. But that was one of the reclassifications that have been approved by um, at my HR meeting um, for discussion here. So that should be on our next agenda. Yeah. What we do want to discuss, which I mentioned earlier and Commissioner Metzger echoed it, is this idea of these of certain people who are who are 24-7 who are not traditionally known as first responders in the sense of firefighters or police but who are work who are on call 24 7 and who end up being out a lot 24 7 who are being paid instead of being paid 40 hours a week they're being paid 37 and, and i don't want to put plain on the spot but i'm going to um you know, they're responsible for millions and millions of dollars with the grants that come into our county um there's a good reason why um you know, our, our taxes only covered about 30 39 million dollars i believe yet we have a a budget of 130 a lot of that money that comes in is from grants and it's from your staff we have had 21 people leave planning it's basically due to uh, very low salaries uh, the state steals them even 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 the city has stolen a few i want them to say steal take them and, and for good reason yeah you know they, they offer they offer better better opportunity for those employees so we have to be competitive with them and if we want our planning department to work and continue to bring in monies to help the county overall, we have to be able to pay the staff. That's just one department. Shannon? I have a question. Yeah. Um, with regard to the reorganization, I had a second part that I was working on, and you had some, the commissioners had some input into that. That's not going to wait until next year, is it? I mean, the end of next year? What was the second part? The, my main planners. We're, just you're going to be looking at um, work studies so on positions. On the, the planner twos? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's not waiting until the end of next year, is it? No. Oh, okay. Is I that just, was that in today? Did we read that today? No, that's not. We had to change some language. Oh, um, no, that's about the planner twos and yeah. the three years. Yes. And, yeah, and yes. trying, part of I our goal sure is to create a career okay. ladder. No, it's not waiting. Okay. No, right. Waiting. No, part of our goal <laughs> with all of the employees is to create career ladders so that if someone comes here as a planner one, they can look forward and say, if I meet this goal, this goal, and this goal, I get promoted to a planner, planner two. And obviously a change in compensation. Again, what I don't think we want to become is a place that trains people and then they go whether you know we we battle that in the prison where the state and the federal government take our people we don't want to be a place that trains planners and then the city takes them see cock takes them the reason being is first of all planning is a good example with those 21 positions Jenny who's the lead planner ended up training a lot of people nine, nine people she trained nine people so what does that mean she's not being able to get her work done unless she's working all hours She's training these people, they leave, a new person comes in, and it also puts our programs at risk. A good example is what's happening where, where we are scrambling to get our Brownfield uh, program flying because the federal government has said, listen, if you don't get that program flying, the million dollars or the $800,000 we gave you is coming to a community that is going to be taken from you and given to a community that can get it going. So it's in our interest not to be a trainer and... They go on, but it's just not funny. It's the prison. Yeah, prison's it's a good example. Sheriffs, right? You know, we've got sheriffs leave and go to other departments, other law enforcement agencies, and for good reason. So 
again, this is a 34 year old problem that isn't going to be solved overnight. And we're attacking it. That main thing is we're finally attacking it. We're not taking it down the road any longer. We have to for retention and for hiring. So, um, Jessica, yes. so there are no other departments that you know of that uh, are going to get a, a total reclassification in the year 2023. Um, the only because, and the reason I say that is because. I, I talked to a few clerks, I talked to a few paralegals that, you know, they're going to argue, well, why wasn't I moved up to this date? You know, so, I, um, I, don't, I don't have that answer for them. Right. Now. So all the department heads were given an, an equal opportunity to be involved in um, this process. Um, I requested that any reclassifications that they had, they would get to me by a certain date so that I could then in turn review them with our commissioners for approval. Um, and so that happened on December the 5th, and again this past Monday, December the 12th. Um, and so I do have one other um, reclassification that came through that was not approved that I do imagine we will uh, continue working on, and that was at RMS. Um, so that came through but was not approved, and I anticipate uh, January, February timeframe, we might come back to the commissioners with an, an, another uh, proposal. Um, outside of that and updating the planner um, and the MDJ clerks that we already discussed, um, I know we have some plans and facilities. Um, yeah, we're going to take a look at facilities. We are going to take a look at clerks across the board. Yep, clerks across the board. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to promise anything. Um, I, I want to look at them and determine um, how our clerks are sitting within the market. So, the yes, eight, we're going to continue. Issue with the yep. Certain, uh, Co correct. That's on our uh, agenda for next Monday at my HR commissioner's meeting to discuss again um, those few departments that, uh, that I recommend transitioning from 75 hours to 80. Um, so, Commissioner, to answer your question, that's all I can think of at this point. Okay. Do you have any more questions? I do. Yes, go ahead. Um, on the telecommunicators, with this adjustment in their pay grades, are we still continuing with the bonuses? That's a good question. I think they... Well, it, I, I'm, I'm not sure it was a bonus as much as it was a, if you meet metrics, you come in as a trainee. You, you come in as a trainee, or telecommunicator one, at a certain amount. You do certain training, you get to telecommunicator two. You do more training, and this training doesn't happen over weeks. I mean, this happens over a long time, right? You get to telecommunicator three supervisor. So again, it's part of this idea of building a... It's over more than a year. And so the recruiting uh, bonuses are complete. They're not recruiting, excuse me. The retention bonuses have been completed because they were for five quarters. Okay. Uh, okay. The recruiting bonuses okay. are, are still in play. I would say it again. Recruiting <coughs> bonuses. Okay. And um, so there were four, at least four training gates that they had to meet, and all of these are, are specified training requirements uh, by Pima. So in order to move to the next step in being a qualified telecommunicator, you have to pass that amount of training and then be certified by FEMA. But aren't we um, acknowledging that by increasing all three of these? So they are, I mean, we're already bumping them up from trainee to two to three. Well, they're so not getting bumped up. The people aren't getting bumped up. The position, well, it's the position that's getting bumped up. Right. You just happen to have people in those positions. I understand. So now, is They're, it prudent to keep bonuses when we've increased their payroll? We're still down five TCs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. No. No. That's okay. No. I know, and they're good the questions. Record. I don't know that I would call them bonuses as much as. And correct me if I'm wrong, but. No, so they are bonus. There's bonuses. There's in bonus addition to the matrix place. of moving to yes. the positions, the yes. director has reached okay. out to us. Um, things have got not much better. They have many openings now. They had two people that went through all the way through the training and have left before the two would begin, uh, which is always the time now. And, uh, and, and they're working, she's working extra hours trying to maintain the ship afloat. 
And so, um, it's a again, it's a desperate situation where we have to make sure people are there to answer the phones for 911. And so she brought two proposals to us. And from working with Jess, we were able to come up with a third proposal that actually saved even more money and still satisfied what they need. It's and important to note too that beginning in, in the new year, yeah. we're going to 12 hour shifts on that. Yeah. Right. Right. So, and part of what, um, what we're doing is making sure that any proposal that a department head brings us is consistent with the policies that exist in the county. So, for in fact, uh, the Ms. Baylor's proposal was a nice proposal, but it wasn't consistent. She had two. She had two of them. They weren't consistent with other other policies, which obviously you wouldn't be happy about as the as the controller. And so we said, well, we can't do that because it's outside the policies. We have to do it consistent within the policies. So we came up with a third one through Jess. And we're able, still able to satisfy their needs and save an additional seven thousand over in the proposals. The correction counselor that, dollar. Excuse me. Oh, that sorry. was in accordance with the policies. Right. Yes. The dollar ninety increase to the corrections counselors is that a temporary override or a permanent increase in their pay? Permanent increase, just like we did with. Uh, increasing the starting wage for CO ones from eighteen ten to twenty is a dollar ninety. Oh, yeah. and then we gave the same increase all the non bargaining unit members and um, the correction or counselors were left out of that equation, so we're correcting that. Okay. And are we putting dates out there for the temporary transfers from PRC to prison? Or are we just kind of biding our time to fix the problem? I didn't know. It's a temporary right. solution. But we don't, we, have, we don't have an exact end date yet. Okay. But I can tell you what our goal is. Our goal is to try to beef up in the short term, as we discussed, mm -hmm. that if we can get transfers there, if we can make incentives for people to <coughs> volunteer for overtime, right? So that they can control their lives. They're not mandated. They can control their lives. They can say to their partners, spouses, if I work this date, I'm going to make beyond time and a half, I'm going to make, you know, whatever. If we get all that done, it, it gives us the breathing room we need to get new people in and get them trained. Because what's been happening to us, as you know, is that we are drowning. We, we get five in, five leave. Right? And we're training those five, so we're constantly on a treadmill. But our treadmill is going faster than we can keep up with it. So part of this PRC transfer down is to try to get us some breathing room. Right. Sure the Which was a recommendation right. of the prison board. Right. Yeah, I, I just, I'm asking mm -hmm. in, the, in Which you're on. You know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good for the public to understand, yeah. Crystal. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of a, a unique situation because, in a sense, um, you could even look at it, and I think uh, I've sent that to you and where it could not it, it could be identified as not a TDA action because we're just really using somebody who is qualified in a different position to step in and fill a shift uh, not necessarily a position because we're trying to hire right. to fill the position right I think that was all I have okay thank you You're welcome. good questions yeah by the way this is the healthy public deliberation that not only are we obligated by law to do, but which is healthy for our constituents because it helps our constituents understand what is going on and why do we do these things as opposed to them just reading in the paper that we raised all these things and, or on, on Penn Live or wherever they read it. Hopefully whoever is writing the reporting will put in the context of what it's, why it's being done. Yeah, it's important for retention and, and, uh, right. and hiring. And just to clear up with Commissioner Messer, I hope you understand that this was not an intentional, because I, 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 and Listen, I, I'm just saying I, that it no, is but I apologize for me and the fact that I know that there was a number, a number of people that are not going to be reclassified by the first of the year or the second pay period. Right. That to me is uh, inequitable. It's it's something that. If, if you had it all together, that's one thing. But it's but it's not, and it's it's not fair to everyone. Okay, so can I just make one? You know, you were at the birthday meeting and the lunch that we had with employees, and I'll just reiterate what I said there. I hope that employees, because one of the issues is the issue of employee morale. 
you can look at your job here as the glass half full, or you can look at it as the glass half empty. The choice is yours. But the reality is that we have taken a lot of hard steps to try to change real conditions that employees work under, whether it's simple things like changing part-time and full-time to the same, salary, same pay for the same job, or whether it's the health center that we're investing in, or whether it's these kinds of changes, the compensation policy. So I would ask that employees try to see that the glass is half full, and even if you were not here today, that we are working to try to change both the material conditions that people work under and the atmosphere so that people will stay. And I hear what you're saying, Commissioner, and, and some of it may have been, for example, with, with the RMS, we said to RMS that they need to come back with some specific answers to some questions, and, and they're going to do that. They're going to do that. And uh, the same thing with some of those other clerk positions that you're thinking about. And I, I want to just make sure I make myself perfect. <coughs> when you presented us, you know, this uh, compensation policies and, and then all the information that you received from the Department of Heads and Elected Officials, <coughs> okay, it came to a certain number. I'm in favor of that. I just, I don't think we've changed anything. You, you may have changed one or two things as far as classifications, <coughs> but as far as the commissioners agreeing totally on what was presented to them by the elected officials and the department heads, I don't believe we changed anything. So my no vote has nothing to do with that. I believe that it is fair. Thank you. If, if we're discussing this, and I don't know the legality of what I'm about to say, so the solicitor can yell at me if need be, <laughs> but <laughs> to prevent a log jam um, with a tie vote, which it sounds like it may have been, if we vote on these as a lump sum list, we may want to vote on them individually. Well, let me ask the solicitor. If we take a vote on them together in one package and the vote fails, we could then go back and take a vote on the individual items? I'm sorry, I'm still processing the invitation. Can we, can, we identify, <laughs> can we identify those? Well, that's what, I don't know if we're allowed to. Yeah, I'm sure we can. Yeah, yeah, well, we, we could take those. them individually. Yeah. Instead yeah. of re rereading them yeah. again, right. Right, which I think is a total waste of time. And, Unfortunately, I, I think to answer the question I was asked, you could do it in a number of ways. You have a motion and a second on the floor. You could call that question. If that question fails, you can reframe a different motion. Or in light of the fact that the discussion is indicating that the motion may fail, you could reclassify, withdraw your motion and reclassify it now to your just your Thank you. I'm not sure the motion is going to fail. But I'm not sure either, no. but I thought to prevent problems, I was yeah. going to bring that up in discussion. Okay, okay. we have a motion and a second on the floor. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. yeah. So it's 2-2, two, two, it fails. Are we in the, now we're in the salary board department? Right. Correct. Right. I mean, are you going to vote no on all of them? Or oh, absolutely. Okay. I, I'm not voting no. So some of them are going to fail. And my problem is similar to what Tony's saying because I have said this and I have voted and I feel disingenuous if I vote yes because I have said no, voted no in the past because we aren't getting this done fast enough. I realize this is a big chunk. I don't want to hurt the employees that this is positively affecting. And it hasn't been an issue before because you three in one vote. Well, I, I ask think question. we're doing this quite quickly. We, mean, we, we are. This, think, this has been I a problem that has been ignored for years. And we're finally addressing it. And we're moving very fastly. And you can't, you can't put everything in the can at once. Well, here's the you other just thing. Can't. I'm not sure what the 26-27 pay issue is. Because if you make this change in the first full week, or full, first full payroll in January, 
then they will get 26 pays. If you do it now, they're going to get 3.5% on top, which I think no. this commissioner would, they will. Because that change isn't made until after week. this payroll's done. Of, uh, just one week. No, because we don't do a split payroll anymore. I Right, but they're going to get the three and a half. Absolutely. Krista, am I wrong that they're going to get the three and a half for the time December 25th to January 8th? They are That's going it. to get three and a half percent on top of the reclassification. Right, but they're going to get it for the period that it's, begins that December 25th. Amount, and I, no, I, I, I would they're not. Well, they're going to do it January 9th to They'll January... They'll do it after this payroll that you're approving all these to happen in. Because the last payroll of the year, first payroll of next year, <laughs> used to be split. So part of it was done at this year's pay rate, part of it was done at the new pay rate. Right. First right. payroll in the new year is going to be at the higher rate. Right. right. And it starts January... 25, December 25th. That starts December 25th, that pay period. Yes. I pay period it. one starts. So the first pay backwards. period of the year. Correct. Right. So well, all these increases plus three and a half percent. But but I thought my intention when I vote or did we vote on the three and a half? No, not yet. My intention was that they get three and a half for all of twenty twenty three, beginning with the first pay period. That won't be voted on until December twenty ninth. Exactly when we do the budget, because we told them they're getting a three and a half percent pay increase for twenty twenty three. So the first pay period of twenty twenty three happens to start this year, but it's not in this year's tax right uh, but filing. these changes will be made first right. and the three and a half percent added to them right and i, I think, think they would be made simultaneously because they're done at the december 25th but pay you period. have to have a three and a half percent to calculate on and the fact that a lot of these mm -hmm. are happening this month that change is going to be made in the system first and then the mass three and a half percent will be added well, after. You're, you're so how much are we talking issues. about do you think Oh, You're making a good point, Krista, because in that case, I mean, I, you have to explain this to me. Because we had to move accepting the budget to the following week, right? Yeah. They missed that three and a half percent. I mean, I, are no, they going to miss I mean, the first week of the three and a half percent? Because uh, year, they can't make the change in the system until you approve it. We're not going. They're going to be working on year end in this time frame. But if this gets approved today, they can go in and make all these changes today, even though you haven't fully approved the three and a half percent, which will happen later, and add it to these increases. Right. So okay. Well, I just so the say difference would be making the changes now, and then uh, approving the three point five or uh, approving the 3.5 and making the changes after a 3.5% increase. Correct. Either way, the increases are, are going to happen. It just depends on in which order. Correct. So I'll tell you how you figure it out and correct me. If well, it's you take 3.5%, you divide it by 26 <laughs> pay periods, right? It means you take 3.5%, divide it by 26 pay periods. It means that they are going to get 0.13 extra than if you did it the second pay period. So, and obviously every bit of money counts, but in the scheme of what we're doing, I probably would say it's a de minimis amount. Now I know somebody's gonna come back and scream at me and tell me that you know any tax dollars is not de minimis, but what I mean is that we've gotta look at how much energy we're spending on trying to hash this out versus what the, plus what we may require IS to do. And budget and finance. And budget and finance. And, and budget and finance where we have a lot of new people and we're still trying to get everyone up to speed. So I think sometimes we have to sort of look at what we do in terms of the efficiency and effectiveness of it versus what the actual cost is. And I know I had, I had said initially this this should take effect January first of next year. Everything should be effective January first if approved. Pay period starts December twenty fifth. So that's the, the reason why I, I thought it had to go back right. because of we don't do split pay periods. Right, we don't do split pay periods. And anymore. that's historically what we've done for the past right. two years. And that's right. the reason why I changed my position because, right. you know. And what will happen though, that payroll will actually be paid at this year's pay rate, unless you approve this today. The entire payroll. And then the first full payroll in January would be with a three and a half percent. Oh, so they actually won't get the three and a half until pay period two. Correct. 
So, but, so but if you approve this today, uh -huh. that raise goes on top of a, a current increase. Right, because what we're doing by voting on the 29th is we're past the start of the pay period. Mm -hmm. So can we do it re retro or no? You're creating a massive amount of, of work, work right. for budget and finance, and you're already doing that in certain cases with going retroactive on some of these raises. Yeah. Because there's so, a lot of payroll corrections that need to be made. Let me ask my two colleagues who voted no. If we were to say, if we were to reframe the motion so that the 3.5% was put on the second pay period of the year, which it's going to be because we're not going to vote until the 29th, and we put this effective in the first pay period of the year, would that move the two? No I think votes? that's what his problem is, though, because you're that's giving the, them the three and a half That's the smaller of part of the I problem. understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but, but let's try to find but, a solution. Well, would you do that? Trying to understand, okay, trying to understand the complexity of, of the 25th, first pay period, and no split pay. Right. Right. Because mm -hmm. this is, this is the first year we're, we're not going into a split pay. Mm -mm, this no. is the third, the third year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, right. So if, my, my biggest concern is that, and it has nothing to do with this now, it has to do with the budget, approving the budget. Mm -hmm. The 3.5% is going to be approved on the budget, mm -hmm. but it will have missed the 25th of December. Mm -hmm. Because That's a problem to me. That's a problem to me because then I believe I would change. I would reverse my decision. Mr. It's Chairman, can I? Can we move for an executive session? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Does that mean you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. On a matter of personnel? Yeah, on these personnel matters. Yes. Yeah, on personnel matters. Recess for an executive session? Quick one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, project oh, as well as the mall project and they actually are looking at the main street project for the brownfield so you've got some information to share with you we can do that right after you well they're not going to be here for that because yes. they've got to get state college for closing at one o'clock so. so i figured if you, yeah we, we got to go right ahead hey jason I'll say hello. Also. Oh, hey, sir. It's not going to leave. Hi, I'm John. Hey, John. One executive session wasn't enough for you guys? No, we're just going to go up to the desk. I can't. My council, or Union County Commissioner, canceled this morning. So, I'm going to go over there. That's going to depend upon what happens in the next few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. He's working. 
actual car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you want me to reach out to them and call you? Oh, yeah, they're out in the hallway. Um, yeah, they're in the second section. Jason and Jenny went out in the hallway. The, the, uh, yeah. I can reach out to them. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to. Excuse me one second. I'm sorry. We have recess and we'll reconvene now. The commissioners call the meeting. Right. Right. Um, I, I move that uh, on that uh, salary board item that we make these changes effective the second, the first full pay period of 2023, which is actually pay period number two, Except but the first. 
full pay period of 2023. Except for the one that goes further backdated? Right, except for the one in which the uh, the uh, director of HR has indicated a... Yes, for the accountant position, the accountant. Um, which Carissa oh. Seals currently sits in. Yeah. So then par par partly also because we're trying Absolutely. to recruit in that department. Oh, true. The, the second one is that the counselors are going to be retroed back to right. J June 1st of 2022. So all but those two take effect in the second payroll of 23 which would be the first full payroll of 2023 and, the and you know what i'll defer to the controller to make the motion no sir okay thank you Bill. no okay all right so uh that's the motion uh it's with the yeah just real quick um i just want to make sure that one second not. do we have a second for the question well he well, was well, changing his well, motion Perhaps in light yeah. of the fact that there was discussion that was happening while the commissioner was attempting to state should his we motion. Would, I'll should we, we withdraw we the, the first motion? motion? We voted. Well, well, no, it, we voted it, was, it was, oh, it didn't pass, yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman, but I'll vote. Made, you made a motion. Well, I'm gonna. Before you start, he's, but, uh, Mr. McDermott pointed out the um, moving of the PRC to prison. Has to stay on the twelve thirteen date as well. So right. there's three right. that this won't affect. Right. So, so in light of what the solicitor yes. asked, so I would move to pass all the action items as written on the agenda for the dates, and if there is no date indicated, it's the second full pay period of twenty twenty three, or the first right. Because they, it yeah. says the dates that we Anything want to start that's early. That's identified yeah, that's identified that's in the that document goes to, goes to the date yeah. indicated. Otherwise, if there is no date indicated, it's the second full. Or a date earlier. This is what I would say. There, everything that says effective December 25th would change to be effective January 8th. Thank you. Which is the start of the first full pay period of 2023. Right. Thank you very much. That is a good way of saying it. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Yeah. Okay. No, that's not just tomatoes, tomatoes. That's, that's potatoes, tomatoes. That is. Commissioner, that's your motion? That's the motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, it's carried three to one. This time, a good time and, and, for those, <laughs> and for those other employees that will not see that benefit, I apologize, but I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't in good conscience vote against this. Well, and again, I would just hope people would look at the glass half full and understand that we're continuing to work on these issues. And we'll adjourn the salary board at this time. We'll reconvene the commissioner's public meeting. And for TDA actions, Jessica, I ask you to... Uh, you don't have to read them Not again. read them all? And if we can accept them as a slate. Yes. Do I need to say anything more than that? No. Okay. okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve the items in action item number... 7.1. 7 7.1. Thank you. Second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. That brings up to, to informational items. Well, um... Are you talking to the phone back? Yeah, go ahead. I'll jump on the phone. Okay. Uh, the commissioner's going to leave and he's going to jump on the phone. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, just for the sake of um, efficiency here, I'm just going to also present um, action item 9.2. Um, this is a um, small revision to the compensation policy as. Um, Commissioner said, I've, I've worked with all our department heads and leaders, um, you know, before we initially proposed this and also since it was approved at the, the public meeting. Um, and so we've made some adjustments based on all of that feedback. Um, and um, I, so I have it here for your approval today. Okay. And can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. And Jessica, I want to compliment you and your staff. Um, this is something that. Uh, I've repeated over and over. It's kind of like a dead horse I keep continue to beat. Mm -hmm. We talked about the, the uh, county now updating the uh, pay scale since 1988. We've had 56 policies that have not been updated since June 24th, 1999. And you attacked those in your first year. And this is another one that you've uh, revised or updated. Mm -hmm. And we want to compliment you and your staff for. Uh, uh, something that's well over 20 years thank you very much we're doing some really good things and I um, 
you know, we'll continue looking at compensation and market um, for all of our positions um, on a yearly basis moving forward. Um, so this isn't the end. Um, we will continue um, pursuing um, these changes moving forward. So Great, thank, thank you. you. All fair side? Aye. All right. So carried. Okay, now back to informational items. All right. Uh, 8.1. Invest in the Lycoming uh, County Mall project. Okay. We're excited today to have um, the uh, FanVest, the investors, developers that are looking at uh, the project at Lycoming Mall and to hear an, an update on uh, the project. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're going to invite John to come yeah, up too because we're, are we live streaming uh, this yes. today, Mr. Yeah. If you could just introduce yes. yourself. Sure. So you're on camera here to all of Lycoming County in yeah. the world. And they're very eager to hear what, <laughs> what your plans are, and we've got a lot of questions. And uh, Well, uh, good morning, Commissioners. We thank want to you. thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity to be here today. We wanted to take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about FanVest, going, and then uh, what we've done in the past, and uh, uh, our plans in the future here in the, in the uh, city and the county. Uh, with the projects of Lycoming like Mall and some of the other things. So I'm, I'm joined here. Again, my name is Ara Kravanjan. I'm a, a, a manager and principal of FanVest uh, Partners. I'm joined here by John Jahan Shai. He's a local a member of the community. So uh, if you have any questions for him, he's ready to go. So I've got a statement if I can just go this. So FanVest is a local uh, development organization committed to transforming uh, older properties into viable economic centers. We have a proven track record of taking community assets that have fallen into disrepair and redevelop redeveloping them into uh, both for uh, redeveloping them uh, both in Lycoming County and other locations uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Um, as I said, John is, is a resident of, of Muncie and uh, he is uh, very proud of the economic resurgence that he's been party to in, in this county, as, as am I. Um, uh, this is not the first property, uh, the Lycoming Mall, uh, uh, which I'm uh, alluding to, that uh, uh, has been redeveloped by FanVest uh, and our other uh, affiliated companies. Uh, in 2006, we acquired the former Schnodick Furniture Manufacturing Facility, which is a 343,000 square foot uh, building located in Montoursville. The facility was shut down in 2004 and jobs were moved to China. Uh, the property was completely re redeveloped in 2010 and 11 uh, for Schlumberger, one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. Uh, we acquired uh, 22 acres of farmland in uh, Pensdale Exit, obtained much of the land development for uh, the site before selling it to Geisinger Health, who is currently operating it as a healthcare facility. Uh, other new development projects. Uh, recent development projects uh, in Williamsport included the Texas Road Roadhouse, which was the uh, former Ruby Tuesday restaurant, which was demoed and redeveloped in, uh, just last year. Um, we also have recently completed a Chipotle Mexican restaurant, quote, which was a, uh, a former closed Chinese restaurant, uh, and we uh, demoed and redeveloped that on the Golden Strip on East 3rd Street. Um, now as to the Lycoming Mall, uh, as you know, Vacant malls are affecting communities by coming off the tax rolls and becoming blighted properties, uh, often abandoned and overgrown, making them a deterrent for traffic to nearby businesses and draw on local services. Uh, FanVest is pursuing the revitalization of this property to transform it into an economic center. Uh, properties like the Lycoming Mall can be leveraged uh, for mixed-use developments, bringing new restaurants, retail shops, healthcare facilities, and or residential units. Uh, communities that have taken advantage of these opportunities have, have seen a ripple effect of further investment, development, and job creation. The current mall site is failing, and without major improvements, the mall will risk facing the same blighted and abandoned fate as others in the country. The Lycoming Mall project will be a multi-phase project that will include changes to the existing infrastructure by adding new transportation assets, demolishing and refurbishing existing buildings, adding new utility assets, and constructing new buildings. The comprehensive costs will be significant, but the economic impact will be even greater. 
At this time, uh, FanVest is focused on uh, completing the purchase of the property, and we have approached the county for that assistance and that endeavor, and we, we really appreciate your consideration at this point. Uh, at the same time, we are thrilled that the Commonwealth recently recognized the value of the project with a commitment of a $5 million RAPP grant, that's Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program funding for this project. Uh, we believe in strong public-private partnerships and look forward to working with the state and county to bring this project to fruition. Some of the other projects that we're also working on, which you may have recently heard of, uh, in the community is the Maynard Street uh, Commons, we call it, Maynard Commons. It's, uh, this is a property located at the corner of Maynard and First Street, uh, which uh, currently reflects the remnants of an industrial city of years past. The existing parcel, uh, which is at 164 Maynard Street, contains dilapidated structures and a brownfield eyesore, a, a sharp contrast of the image that we are now seeing are, are having to create it into a new economic uh, gateway. Maynard Commons is a collective commercial redevelopment and revitalization project which will elevate the area into a vibrant economic driver in the community, providing affordable dining and convenience options a mere walking distance from 4,000 plus students. The proposed project seeks to attract three potential tenants to newly constructed pad sites, a quick service restaurant, a gas station, convenience store, uh, and possibly other uh, dry box uh, tenants. They will also help con uh, contribute to the area's vibrant service industry, in addition to the obvious aesthetic improvements. Maynard Commons will provide more than $31 million in economic impact uh, to the Williamsport area, including nearly 100 permanent jobs, 50 temporary construction jobs, and a number of ancillary uh, positions. These opportunities will offer wages that are significantly higher than the current per capita income in the city. New redevelopment projects in Williamsport and Lycoming County signal economic growth and forward progress. The, re the region has emerged in the last decade plus from years of economic decline and FanVest is pr proud and desires to continue to be a catalyst for those, that growth in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? No, thank you. You know, we want to be sure you connect with our planning department about the EPA grant. You've already done that. Jenny is yep. here. Jenny's on top of it. Yep. Um, that EPA grant, you know, helps to clean up blighted properties. So she's on top of we it. We appreciate well. that. We, we caught her during the break in the, in the back there. So She's very efficient. Uh, yeah. and, yeah. Yep. In, in addition, as I said, we really are thrilled that the, uh, uh, it was a significant grant to get on an application so quickly. I mean, we only started this project eight months ago, and with, our, uh, with the initiatives that we made and the, and the local and state for, uh, constituent friends that we have, we were able to attract a significant uh, investment by the state. In addition, we are waiting for a response to a, a CFA multimodal transportation fund application for the Lycoming Mall, I'm speaking. Right. right. And uh, so we're doing everything we can, and we appreciate uh, the residents, the community, and the county's uh, help uh, to get this done. Well, I'm sure you know, but Representative Jamie Flick is in the back of the room, and he's yeah. made a point of coming here today, I guess, to hear what, uh, what you were doing, and he and Representative Joe Hamm and obviously Senator Yaw has been extremely helpful in getting, Senator Yaw was extremely helpful in getting that RCAP grant and we certainly will work to support you in any way. This is a first time for us where I think we've loaned a significant amount of money to a private entity and we had some people come with concerns, nothing real, real strong, but they were concerned about environmental issues. We've learned that you've done a phase one out there at the mall. Um, did you do a phase two or no? No, just the phase just one. Just the phase one, which is, which is sort of a good overview. So to the gentleman who came a couple of weeks ago and expressed concern about that, there has been some due diligence done on it. And that due diligence would, will assist us in, uh, in the work that we need to do to get the loan from, any loans from the EPA uh, fund, that revolving loan fund. That was yes. important that you did that. Um, 
But anyway, we're excited to have you. And, uh, you know, to the public, I just want to say, look, it's the first time. It's a, it's a public-private partnership. We're putting up $5 million of ACT fee on a loan. It's not a grant. They're paying 3% interest on it. Uh, the bank is putting in money. You guys are putting in uh, your, your equity. And our choices are either to leave this mall and have it continue to sort of deteriorate. And what happens, of course, is you get issues of drugs, you get issue of vandalism, and so forth. Or on the positive side, we appreciate what you're doing, taking the initiative and taking the risk to make it happen um, and to be a driver of economic development. Oh, well, we appreciate that. Uh, we are making, uh, to your point, a $5 million equity investment ourselves. And more importantly, we are local developers and we are part of the community and we really want to see it succeed because if it does, everything else is going to benefit from it around. Yeah, right. it's great that John lives in Muncie. I mean, it's just... Yeah. We yeah. want to thank you for your interest in the county. Um, yeah, the Lake Wing Mall, which is a, a, a cornerstone in, in the county for 40 years, um, has been in decline for some time. It's in our growth corridor. It's vital that we... Uh, that we make sure that the developers who decide to buy this want to make it a better site for the county and the growth corridor. And uh, we uh, share your vision, uh, wanting to uh, move in the right direction. So it is uh, something completely new for us, obviously. Uh, but uh, Commissioner Mayor Vito stated it is a loan. Uh, we feel very confident in, in your track record, what you've done throughout the state college area and uh, our area. Um, what you've done so far in our area has been welcomed, and um, people are very excited at the new restaurants and and uh, what may be taking place down here in the near future. So we want to thank you for your for your interest, and we look forward to bringing this to a vote and um, and watching uh, the property close. I believe in in March. That's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions from the audience for these two gentlemen? Is there any online back? We want to thank you for traveling today yeah. up down today on one a word. snowy yes. day. Does the grant money from the state require provisions for housing of undocumented, illegal, <laughs> or pre processed immigrants or on expired work or education visas? I, I don't want to speak for the developers, but I think that when they refer to housing, they're talking about market rate housing, maybe some housing for seniors, maybe housing for empty nesters maybe housing for families that want to move here as well as workforce housing right workforce housing well. yeah. right yeah. i don't think that there's any intention to do any of the things that the um i'll ask you unequivocally have you been approached by the department of defense or the department of homeland security about housing any people there no no no, no. no. so we can put that rumor to rest no. very early on before it gains traction, that that is not what's going on here. You know, to the public, if you if you read, there are malls that are being refurbished like this in places across the country. Not that many, I don't think, here in Pennsylvania. To be honest with you, there are a lot of these malls the that Virginia need to be done. area. What's, what's the that? Virginia area. There. Yeah, the Virginia area. So in some ways, this is cutting edge, and it's really what's happening with these malls. I mean, there's no question. Um, so it's great that you're doing that, and sometimes we need to just look to the horizon and the future, right? That's we exactly have right. Jason from the chamber. Jason, do you have any comments you'd like to make? No. I, I just want to say thank you all for working with us. Uh, the county has uh, been a great partner for economic development initiatives here in Lycoming County. Uh, this is definitely something new to be asked of the county to consider, and it was good to have a willing ear uh, to be able to consider the request and uh, looking forward to seeing what these gentlemen can do because they only mentioned a few projects here. Uh, they've also done projects over in the Montgomery area, uh, Clinton Township in particular. They picked up the old Halliburton property uh, right across from the prison there. Uh, they've got a, an active business in there right now, Cut Energy's in there. So there's, there, these are people who are vested in our, our community, not only just the Commonwealth and other areas of the state, but here in Lycoming County. And, being able to have this opportunity to partner on, on such a venture that is such a large scale uh, project that is highly visible here in Lycoming County 
seeing the investment that Geisinger's made recently, some of the other activities that are taking place down there, to have them all sitting there in the state that it is right now is not healthy for anybody. Uh, to be able to see this partnership come together uh, and see where that goes, is, I'm, I'm anxious for it. So uh, again, I want to thank the county for taking the consideration of this uh, and look forward to seeing and working with everybody to get this done. Thank you. One other thing I want to note that this is not coming out of the, of the general tax revenues. Sure. It's coming out of the Act 13 fund. Uh, so, um, but that's where the loan is being generated from. Well, as, uh, as you said, we want to thank everybody, including you know, just being introduced to Jessica and the other programs that are here because it really is public-private partnership, all different programs. Like we also met today with the Local Economic Development Corp for assistance as well. They, everything does help make it happen. I know it sounds like a big project, a lot of dollars and millions are, are discussed, but it takes a lot to, 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 to make a metamorphosis, so we appreciate it. And patience. Right. It's going to have. It's going to take years. It's not going to happen overnight. But it's 138 acres, and it's it's a great opportunity. Right. We think so too. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, yeah. Happy Holidays. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. much. <coughs> Take care. We look forward to having you back when we have the public vote on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And that's by the way, that's Jenny. Thank oh, you. That's okay. Now Jessica's the thank HR you. director. Thanks for easy to travel. travel. So many times. No, no, I know, <laughs> I know. That's <laughs> okay. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the point two, Jenny. Availability of loan and grant funds. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, commissioners. We're working on that. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm here today to announce the new Lycoming County Revolving Loan Fund Program, which was mentioned earlier. Um, it's funded by an $800,000 grant from the U.S. EPA. And this program will provide low interest loans and grant funds to finance the cleanup of brownfield sites in the county. The overall goal of the program is to return these sites back to productive use. Um, the program builds upon our past EPA grants, including a 2005 assessment grant and a 2012 assessment grant. Um, through those original grants, we inventoried brownfield sites throughout the county and did um, we conducted property assessments to determine initial contamination. Many of the sites through our initial program uh, were successfully cleaned up and redeveloped as part of that. So I'm just here to tell you about the new funds available for both loan and grant funds. Applications are going to be accepted on a rolling basis um, throughout the fall of um, next year. And appli application materials and additional information is available both on the county website, which is lyco.org um, backslash grants, and our Brownfield website, lyco.org backslash Brownfield. We're hoping to get some good projects out of it. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Okay, moving on to action items. Uh, 9.1 has been removed. Uh, we are at 9.2. Commissioners, I'm going to recommend that 9.3 and 9.4 be tabled because they all um, are in reference to the approved budget. Yes, and we'll put those on for uh, the 29th, 29th of December. We need a motion. I'll move to table 9.3 and 9.4. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Table. Okay. I'm going to have to drop off. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, 9.5. Commissioners, I'm seeking your approval to uh, reappoint or appoint the following individuals to the following boards and authorities. On the Joint Rail Authority, David Schultz, effective uh, 1 January 2023, expiring 31 December 2027, five-year term. Scott Harvey, effective 1 January 2023, expiring 31 December 2027, five-year term. Uh, in the Agricultural and Land Preservation Board, Paul Wensler and David Bussler, both effective 1 January 2023. Hey, stop you for a minute. It's Dean Bustle. You said David. Oh, I'm sorry. Dean. Good, good catch. Um, so that both Paul and Dean would be effective 1 January 2023, expiring 31 December 2026. Both are four year terms. And on the Lycoming County Water and Sewer Authority, Charles Hall and Victor Marquette, uh, both effective 1 January 2023, 
and expiring 31 December 2027, both five-year terms. Okay, that's Mark Watt. Mark Watt. Yeah, it's actually not so I'm going to have to <laughs> brush up on my pronunciation there. <laughs> okay. I'll move to approve the reappointments read by the director. And a second. On the side. Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, did we table 9.1? We said 9.3 and 9.4. Did we table 9.1? 9.1 we removed. Oh, we removed from the agenda. Got it. Right. That was a while ago. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we didn't remove the others. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, 9.6. Seeking your approval. Uh, this is an inmate housing agreement with Montour County 2023 budgeted item. Um, it's the same contract we have for out of county housing um, and our bench of um, surrounding county uh, prisons that assist us when we need to move inmates out of county. Any motion? I move to approve. A second. On the other side. Hi. Hi. Nine point seven. Kate. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. So um, I'm here seeking approval for the commissioner's or sorry, the commissioner's, the coroner's office um, for our 2023 Forensic Pathology Associates Health Network Laboratories contract. Um, this is where we continue to do all of our autopsies and then our blood toxicology. Okay. I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. It's a 2023 budgeted item. And all favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, 9.8 through 9.11, Steve. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Commissioners. Item 9.8, RMS is seeking approval to participate in the Municipal Waste Processing Agreement with Luzerne County. This agreement basically includes RMS in the Luzerne County Solid Waste Plan. It allows RMS to accept waste from Luzerne County. As the business model for RMS has transformed into a more regional approach, um, we have uh, um, obtained more customers um, in addition to local businesses, uh, residents who use our facilities. We also have about uh, a little over 90 uh, certified haulers that utilize the landfill facility. Some of those larger customers of ours um, have also um, expanded their territories uh, over the last few years. And it was actually the, the waste haulers uh, brought to our attention and, and asked and strongly encouraged RMS to become a part of the Luzerne County Solid Waste Plan. Um, there would be no cost associated with this uh, agreement and would allow haulers um, and our existing customers to bring waste from that county to our facility. So. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carry. Aye. Item 9.9, .9, uh, RMS is seeking approval for change order number one to the contract with RNL Development for the landfill closure project. RNL Development uh, was awarded um, uh, a few months ago uh, the bid to, for 22 acres of fuel closure at, at the landfill. Um, this change order is needed to have RNL excavate, install, and then backfill 13 separate cleanouts within our existing landfill gas suction lines. Um, these cleanouts will make upkeep and, and maintenance a lot more efficient right now. Without the cleanouts, there's a lot of deconstruction that would need to go in to update, maintain, um, and clean out any of these um, existing uh, lines. Cost for this change order is a total of $78,293. Um, funds for these uh, for this change order um, will be utilized from the, the landfill closure fund that has already been set aside. Um, the, to to uh, echo what Commissioner Vito always talks about with transparency, uh, the landfill sets aside uh, uh, about $4 a ton right now um, to help uh, uh, offset any closure costs. We've been setting funds aside. The landfill is well funded for closure, for post closure and field closure. This is part of the field closure project, so there are funds available. And RMS puts uh, approximately $1.2 million a year aside for these types of projects associated with, uh, with, with field closure. Okay, great. No motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second all their side. Aye. Aye. Security. Okay. The next two um, items are a little bit unique for RMS. Usually we're up here asking for money for expenses. These are actually uh, contracts with existing customers at the landfill. So these are actually um, revenue contracts for us. 
Uh, we're seeking approval for the waste disposal agreement with the Borough of Northumberland uh, Sewer Authority. The Sewer Authority is an existing customer um, that the landfill currently has under contract. The, the contract is set to expire at December 31, uh, so we would like to renew this agreement with the authority to allow them to continue to use our facility for disposal. Okay, you want to go on 9-11, we'll just uh, take both of them. Yes. Um, 9-11 is, is similar to 9-10. Um, we're seeking approval for the waste disposal agreement with Hemlock Municipal Sewer Cooperative. Uh, this sewer cooperative is also an existing customer with a landfill that is currently under contract set to expire at year end. Uh, this would just renew our contract and allow us to continue to accept this waste at our facility. Okay, motion accept. Uh, uh -huh. Item uh, 9.10, 9.11. I'll move to approve. Uh, second, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And we want to thank you for your uh, your work up in budget and finances. You fill in to help us with the assistance until we have a new director hired. And your work at the landfill. Um, you're an extremely valued employee. We thank you for your service. You put in some long hours, and we appreciate it. Thank you. I did have that comment. 9.1 and 9. Point, or correction, 9.12 and 9.13. Matt. Come back. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, Carrie Hans is on the phone as well. <coughs> Morning, Carrie. We are seeking approval to amend the agreement for the emergency watershed protection projects. Uh, they, they came in higher than that, anticipated because of uh, necessary field changes for the designs. Uh, funding has been secured through NRCS and DEP to cover this cost overrun. We're just looking for approval to amend that agreement. Okay. Motion? I move to approve. Second, all group side. Aye. Security. For the bids that were put out for those, uh, for LY 21-001 from Earthwork Services, uh, that bid was a low bid, but uh, it needs to be rejected due to non-compliance. Uh, award LY 21-001 to Darren Thompson and 21-002 to RHNL. Okay, got a motion. I'll move to approve. I have a second. I have a second. All favor say aye. Aye. So carry. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. 9.14 Malik, Supper Recipient Monitoring Agreement. Good morning. Good morning, Malik. I'm seeking your approval for your sub recipient monitoring agreement with Step Inc. for 21 and 2022 fair grant funded program. A motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All favor say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you, Malik. Thank you. 9.15, Kelsey. Good morning, Kelsey. Good morning. Uh, today I'm seeking your approval to accept the bid from Elijah LLC for the utility, utility elevation project at 251 Jordan Ave, and this is fully fair funded. Okay. A motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. I'll hear say aye. 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 So Kerry, thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. And 9.16, Channel. Good morning, Channel. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, as you know, we had received the relief well bids uh, for the rehabilitation and replacement project uh, for the Williamsport area levy. Uh, we will need to reject Lindy Corporation's bid due to non-compliance with the bid. They didn't bid for the whole project, and there was also some line item errors, and we also believe that the bid is overpriced. The bid is what? Overpriced. Oh, okay. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. No second. I'll move to Aye. Aye. Um, I just want to let you know we're working with our consultant, and uh, we feel that some of the reason that the bid was overpriced is there was not enough time for the consultants to reach out to various companies that do the well fabrication. And uh, we found out that a number of companies have stopped doing that work. Um, so we're going to rebid it in January and do a two and a half month bid so that there is enough time to, for um, companies to reach out to various manufacturers. So that will hopefully get us a better price. Okay, thank Good. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last but not least, 9.17, Mark. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, 
here to request your approval for the renewal of one of our enterprise security software packages. And one year renewal goes to our reseller partner, Dynatech, for $13,320. Uh, the re uh, this renewal is part of our 2022 budget. Okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. All here for Senate. Aye. All right. Mark, before you go, I want to bring up something. Um, your, your office is another department that challenges with staff keeping staff. Uh, it's hard to compete with the private sector. Uh, obviously, we can't afford the kind of salaries that those um, in the companies pay IT people. Um, but you have an incredible staff up there. I want to give you an example. We have two people getting ready to retire. One of them, I saw her last week at the Christmas party. I don't know if you're aware of this. She is going to postpone her retirement because she knows our staff is down. She cares so deeply about the county and the family here, the family environment we try to create, that she doesn't want to see that happen. So. To, to postpone her retirement is, to me, is incredible. Uh, you don't find that in today's world. No, you don't. And I thank her over and over. You know, she's going to stay on a little bit longer so we can get some staff hired. And uh, I thank her over and over. She's a wonderful person. Uh, her commute's not a short one uh, each day, and it's on a, it's on a highway uh, that's been under construction for quite some time. So it's not easy for her to come to work each day. Um, but I thanked her over and over, and that shows uh, the kind of employees that we do have in this county, and, uh, and she's one of them. And we, I thanked her over and over, but I wanted to highlight that here today. Uh, that's the kind of staff we have. She's an awesome person. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Common. I have no. Okay. Public comment? We in the audience? None in the audience? I can see the screen on plate full. We have several. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thomas Adams. Good morning, commissioners. I hope I'm able to attend the next public meeting. I would love to comment more, but I don't type fast enough. I think there's too much attention about hand counting ballots. This is a count of two offices and will easily be reconciled when problems arise. Every time this issue is spoken of, the comparisons are always done in a large-scale operation after long hours of full working and in a rushed atmosphere. I have ideas for hand counting. When requested or required, that would bring confidence or highlight issues in the voting process. Also, many times, Uh, many times. And then it switches over to uh, Carlos Saldivia. It's probably a good idea to post the link to the job openings in the county uh, in all future comments of all your videos going forward until you can fill the line share of the vacant positions. Thanks, Carlos. Back to Thomas. Um, also, many times, comparisons are made to people hand counting money or something on a daily <coughs> basis, <coughs> or we don't hand count everything consistently as a full-time job, but all bank tellers hand count their tills at the end of, of business daily and must reconcile from day-to-day -day balances. Most sensible people will take time to hand count their monies as necessary as do businesses. All hand count inventories of stock of any business will show discrepancies 99% of the time compared to their computer controlled inventory tabulation programs. Of course, if inventory is done more often, the less the discrepancy should be. Uh, should be expected. I will share my thoughts on this topic later on how to move forward with a system of counting votes. Thank you for your work. My prayers are with you. Mr. Beer, Beer, excuse me. Mr. Mayor Vito, I guess I still consider as my friend. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Adams. I appreciate that. Back to Carlos. Uh, 
you're going into an executive session just as it was going into peak drama. I was just putting in the popcorn. Good stuff, guys. Back to Thomas. Does the grant money from the state require provisions for housing of undocumented, illegal, or pre-processed immigrants or on expired work or education visas? I read that earlier. Right, we took care of that. Yeah. And then, uh, back to Carlos, what is the calculus of the pay, pay scale assurance for Maynard Thomas? Okay. Right, well, thank you for the public comments. And, uh, we have completed our agenda. Um, so we will be not having a meeting next week, December 22nd. And we wish everybody uh, a joyous uh, holiday season and uh, Hanukkah and Christmas upon us. And uh, we look forward to our next meeting on Thursday, January, or, excuse me, Thursday, December 29th at uh, 10 a.m. We are adjourned. We're still on the camera. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. I'm good. Hi, Jimmy.